we're real happy with the numbers that we've pulled up with the rear. We've got it square back there, our pinion angle looks good, our thrust angle is great, but we made some huge changes to get it there. That pinion, remember we moved that up about eight degrees. Our axle, we moved it over to the side like four inches. We made some huge changes. So just to make sure that we're working with some real good information, that our, that our dimensions are accurate for what we're gonna be reading on the front, let's go ahead and just do a rollback, do a caster sweep. We'll pull up some new numbers just so we're working with some good accurate information and we'll get going on the front. All right, here's our new screen. We've got our toe in, we've got our camber and our caster. This is on the front now, so our caster is looking at 7.6, uh, 7.7. It's in the green. The manufacturer says that's good. That's good numbers. Seven's good. Uh, the numbers that we had over here when we were looking at our vehicle dimensions said everything was great. The axles are positioned under it right. They're nice and square. Everything's happy. Everything should be good. Really? Seems like we've been here before. Remember how we sighted from here back to here? Get those lined up. Sight right down there. Okay, we're right there. Look how much is sticking out. We've got a couple of inches sticking out there. Let's take a look at the other side. All right, we'll see what this side looks like. Same trick. Line those two up. Sight down here. Okay, we're right there. Oh yeah, we got like four inches sticking out of this side. If we'd have just looked at the machine and believed the numbers, this front axle would have been sticking clear out to this side. So we need to get that remedied before we even get going on the numbers. So let's get under there and adjust the track bar. This particular track bar has a bend in it, so it makes it so that we can't just turn it to make our adjustments because it hits on the differential. There's a lot of different styles. Some of them have a turnbuckle in it, so you can just twist the turnbuckle and adjust them. Others, you'll need to physically drop one in and have it come out. That's what we're going to have to do on this one. So we've got this bolt loose, and if you just shake the body back and forth a little bit, you'll be able to get those to release and pop out. Okay. Now an interesting thing happened here. There was a lot of pressure on that. When we pulled it out, the body just found its neutral position so there's no more stress on this track bar. Oftentimes, that will in and of itself line that axle up with the body. So let's just take a look down the sides just like we do and see how this lines up to give us a quick reference. Again, we look off of here, we sight down, we're just right off of the notch on that tire tread. Let's look at the other side. Same thing, line these up, we're looking good there. We look down there, that looks like it's just right there. So now that we've got the body centered over the tires, all we need to do is make the adjustment by winding in the adjustable end and then sliding it up into position and dropping the bolt in. We'll leave the washer on it. So we just slide it up put it into position, use a soft hammer, and just tap them in. Okay, and then we got our, okay. Now that we've got our track bar set, let's take a look at our caster. Our caster angle is actually measuring the relationship of the upper and lower ball joints to one another. So as we, our wheels pivot on those ball joints, if we have positive caster, the lower ball joint is going to be ahead of the upper one and vice versa will be negative caster if that lower ball joint is behind. Now remember on this one we were had like seven degrees of positive caster so our lower ball joint is out in front of the upper ball joint. So we're going to want to shorten these lower arms and just bring those ball joints back in line with each other a little bit closer. We want to keep as much positive caster as we can. We're usually going to be uh, around four degrees, three, four degrees, depending on how big the lift is. If it's a six inch lift, you're probably only gonna get about three degrees of caster, especially on the JKs. If it's a little bit lower, you're gonna run, you know, four or five degrees of caster. I mean, the more the merrier, we like caster, but we also like our drive lines to stay in one piece. All right, let's go ahead and make our adjustments on this. We'll watch this pinion angle drop and uh, we'll turn them both together that way, we can keep our axles square, because we know that we had that pretty good. Now, one thing that's pretty interesting about this, when you're moving these casters, look at this turn plate. This turn plate is gonna be sliding back. See how much movement that is? We're not just making little teeny adjustments on these. We're actually moving this turn plate back as we swing this caster. Now, if you're making a caster change that is so large that that tire bottoms out on your turn plate, 
all of a sudden it's not going to move anymore and that brake will release and it's going to give you a false reading. So if you make a huge caster adjustment, just go ahead and do a final caster sweep once again at the end just to make sure everything stayed put. All right, we're at about four degrees now. We'll kick this back. Our pinion angle's coming up and it's looking a lot better. So we're gonna try to see if we can get about four degrees out of this one. We're running at about four because our pinion really looks good. That'll make it drive a little nicer to keep us up about four degrees of caster. Got our numbers up again here. Our caster looks good. We were going for about four degrees and that's what we've got. Acceptable spread, 3.9, 4.1. That looks good. Our camber, it looks good. If we had to make a camber adjustment there, the only thing we'd be able to do is to add an adjustable ball joint to a solid axle. There isn't much we can do with them, but it looks good anyway. We're good there. The last one is our toe in. Now what I've done is I've positioned both of these front tires so that they're straight ahead going down the road. Equal spread, 15 on both sides. So the Jeep knows that it's going straight down the road. If the Jeep's going straight down the road, we go up there and look at that steering wheel, it should be straight and level. If it's not, then we need to adjust that drag link. If it looks good, we're done. Well, let's see how we did here. Wow, steering wheel on this and is just right there. Wow, that's lucky. Normally that isn't gonna happen. But on this one, it kind of makes sense because this, this had already been lifted and we just did a pro long arm upgrade on it. So it would make sense because the, the lift height was the same that everything would remain the same. So that steering wheel is dead straight. If you have one that your steering wheel is not straight, a real easy procedure for doing these is just to keep those two numbers, like where we had 15 on each side, 0.15, just keep those where they are, adjust that drag link, and that steering wheel will just rotate around until it is straight. As long as we're going straight down the road, both tires are at 0.15, and this is straight, you're gonna come out with a straight steering wheel every time. One other tip, when we're doing steering wheel centering on JKs, the JK has a computer system that's tied in with the steering column. There's actually a sensor in there that tells just how the steering wheel is turned. And there's also one that measures, uh, in essence, G-force. And it's all calculated with the speed of the vehicle. So if you're taking a turn, it wants to see so many Gs at 20 miles an hour at two degrees of wheel. If any of that's off, it'll kick off your ABS, your ESP, all of that'll turn on. So what we need to do is make sure that those steering wheels are very straight on these JKs and it'll take care of a lot of problems. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions that weren't covered here, feel free to give us a call. Our guys in the customer service department are very capable to answer any of your questions. We'd be happy to help you. Or look us up on the web at terraflex.biz. My name's Dennis and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.